water freezer. Uh, Friday morning, it is like six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> going over with Jess this morning, my, my buddy Jesse there, going over to his place, uh, his cabin on Texada, just helping him finish up a few things over there. Um, but yeah, we got to catch the, uh, the Texada ferry in like, you know, I don't know, half hour or something like that. So it is cold out there, man. There's like a half inch of frost on everything. It just came out of nowhere. So it's cold. My, I can't, I was out in the boat grabbing my luggable loo because, uh, you know, I need something over there just in case. Right. And, uh, man, oh man, my, uh, my fingers, I can't feel my fingers in my left hand. <laughs> anyway, we're going to hop a ferry here in a few minutes. All right. I don't know if you can see this or not. Still O dark 30. Me and Jesse were, uh, we're on the ferry and we we're just landing or docking, I guess at, uh, at Texada. Do I seem awake to you? I haven't had a diet Pepsi that this morning. I've got, you know, my, my, uh, water. <laughs> All I'm saying is, you know, he better be able to get that fire going in the cabin very quickly. <laughs> it's cold. It's a little frosty out this morning. <laughs> And this is the cabin. All right, so this is the cabin. Yeah, good view from the front here. This is the cabin we're working on. All right, I don't know whether you can see me or not. I'm gonna come out here to start with. Oh look, it's daylight. So we had a problem getting into the uh, into the cabin, uh, Jesse's lock was uh, was acting up a little bit there, so we had to uh, we had to play around a little bit and and uh, eventually got in. But man, oh man, I'm telling you, my fingers were frigid. So I made him start the fire right away. He wanted to wait until after we got the mantle up, but <laughs> nope, <laughs> it's still not warm enough in there for me. It's almost warmer outside right now, but that's okay. I've got the mantle up now. There's not a lot of not good light in here, so uh, so I'm gonna try and show you, but. This is the the mantle. Do we have flashlights, I think? Mean, no? uh, yeah, I got flashlights. Oh, I got one on my phone too. But I got a headlamp. Do you want a headlamp? Maybe, yeah. So anyway, this is the uh, this is the mantle. It's all it's shaped and routered and stuff. I was a little bit shy on this end, uh, on both sides, which I'm not overly happy about. But uh, but other than that, it's not, it's not terrible. Again, and this is what it looks like. And not that you can see it well from here. But there, and with the fireplace going on. Huh? Huh? Not bad. Not bad. So now we're going to work on some trim and stuff like that. I'll try and set up the camera and get it recording a bit while we're, while we're working. So here we are. We've got some, some trim already done up. Not that you can see it from there, but we're just going to continue on with the uh, doing some trim. Yeah, you just cut a bunch of them, and, or four of them, I guess. I never did that last time, remember? Yeah, well, do it properly this time. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse's learning how to miter. He's doing a great job. So the, uh, the main room is all trimmed up, which is nice. We've done the, uh, the one bedroom, which again, it's all nice. So it's all looking good. So yeah, we got one more uh, one more room down here to do. Are we doing the loft as well, Jess? Or no, no. We got one more room down here to do. So that's not bad. And Jesse's getting lots of practice on the uh, on the miter saw. So it's great. Learning. You know, he's uh, he's learning what cutting the opposite angles means. Not just the same <laughs> angle on the wrong end. You know, so yeah, he's doing fine. <laughs> We've got the trim done in uh, in all the rooms. We've got the trim done in all the rooms now, which is nice. We're just working literally on the trim around this here, just to make that look a little bit better than it does with the uh, just the plain floor. And 
And I like the way that looks now, actually. Now that you can see it with more light, I do like the mantle. I'm quite happy with that. All right, so I don't think I got a shot of that earlier, but we got those done. So they're nice and both nice and done. Clean up. All right, so we're pretty much done inside. Tacked up all these over there as well. Those two and that one. I'm gonna leave those ones exposed because it looks pretty cool. And now we're gonna move outside. This is the view from the deck. It's actually quite relaxing watching him work. It's not actually, he stresses me out all the time, I don't know why. <laughs> the trim looks good. There you go, looks fantastic. I'm a Texada ferry buddy, going home. Allie's been working all day, so I'm going to very quickly try and make some food. Preheating the oven, 400 degrees. Uh, so Allie's off in about a half an hour. I'm going to try and make spaghetti squash and meat sauce. Spaghetti squash, yeah, that's right. Spaghetti squash and meat sauce uh, before she gets home. I don't have meat sauce without, you know, meatballs, in my opinion, always my opinion. grabbing Rick oh yes green bits lots of green bits in Italian food Woo. that is my cast of usual suspects for my spaghetti sauces mm. the towel I help apparently helps keep the uh, keep the um, Spaghetti squash stationery, and it does a great job actually. Need olive oil, a little bit. That's fine. Don't want to overdo it. Last thing I want is overkill, right? So, you yeah. know. turning that off while I'm here because this is very important, right? So, oregano. First of all, there's not a lot of oregano in there. So, you know, we may as well use that, right? I thought it was busted. I thought Allie was home. Italian seasoning is something that Allie likes, which is basically, in my opinion, a, a mix of all of this stuff. See, I just don't even bother with the tops. The tops are a pain. 
right? Because they don't, you know, they just don't, we can't get enough in there. Uh, I think that's enough, but for Sandra, a little more. <laughs> oh, can't wait to come up and visit there, Sandra, and I can make some food for you. You know you've eaten all this stuff, right? Rosemary? Allie doesn't like rosemary, so I won't put in a lot. Alright, a little bit of pepper. I was going to put rosemary again because I forgot I just put it in. A little bit of... I don't like onion powder. I like granulated onion. Granulated. Actual real onion granulated. Same with the garlic. Not garlic powder, granulated garlic. Mix that in with the meat first, so that it kind of gets right into the into the ground beef. later, right? Just say it. Don't tell Allie. See, I'm rushing a little bit, so I feel like I'm a little bit, like, you know, crazy. But I'd like to have this done before Allie gets home so that she can sit back and relax and not have to, you know, stress out after a long day's work. I'd rather have her Stress out over cleaning after I'm done cooking. <laughs> Come on, that was funny. That hurt. Blood. It's okay, I won't use that finger anymore. There, that there. Hurt finger, you know, not the same one. Close enough. Mm, good stuff. Good stuff boiling away there already. It boils so much quicker than water, it's weirdly weird. Did I put Italian seasoning in there? Did I actually put Italian seasoning in there? I don't remember. Doesn't matter. Now we put Italian seasoning on this. Mmm, green bits! You know what? Because I just don't know whether or not we put this stuff in there. I don't think we did. Ah! Splashed! I got hit! Mark, I know you'll probably appreciate it, but, you know, I know Sandra will never eat at my house again, so... put spices in there, right? I know that. But again, I really strongly believe you can't have too much spice. Besides, it bakes in. It kind of, you know, it's like it dissolves, I think, is what happens. It dissolves, you know, oregano, oregano. There we go. Perfect. Once it cooks, it dissolves. I'm sure it does. It's not bleeding anymore, by the way. Good. And some garlic. Ha ha ha. Oh. 
400 degrees, 30 minutes. Should be done by the time Allie gets home. Oh, it smells so good in here. It smells so good. I don't want to waste all the good Parmesan. So I'm going to hold off on this one. I'm going to use the fake stuff. Eh, you know, it's flavor, right? Put all these away to hide the evidence. Oregano leaves is good. Filling up the oregano bottle, so really Allie has no idea how much oregano I use, right? So crime scene clean. Or is it dirty just enough? Hmm. Now, the most important ingredient, without this, I kid you not, no sugar added, uh, what are the Bortmans? Bortmans, no sugar added chocolate wafers. You need two. Pay attention, because this is important. It's a bizarre twist on the recipe, but I'm telling you. Without these, the recipe just doesn't taste as good. You know, that tastes like spaghetti sauce. Just saying. I tease Allie, but I really don't want her to have to come home and, you know, clean. So. I won't tell her I said that either. It goes straight to her head. Man. I don't like her to have to deal with the dishes either. I know, I know what you're all thinking. I'm doing a nice thing, especially after I worked harder than Allie did all day. <laughs> Don't tell her I said that either. Scary knife. I am very, very cautious of the sharp end of this knife. You know, it's funny I noticed that, but, or I say that, but I noticed that the last time I was using this knife, I was tapping it on my chest, <laughs> which I didn't realize at the time. <laughs> pretty sure I put that, uh, I'm pretty sure I put that spaghetti squash in there at about 4.30ish, maybe 4.23. I want to say 4.23. I only want it to be in there for, for 30 minutes. I don't want it to, I don't want it to be squishy, squishy all the way through. I want it to be, you know, a little bit al dente. I'm not sure if you can make spaghetti squash al dente, but it's, you know, close. I'll try and do an Italian accent, but, you know, uh, again, Ali feels that, you know, I'm being rude and, you know, I'm not supposed to do accents anymore these days, but, you know. So I'll tell you a story, you know, of uh, our, our pastor, Sam, Sam A, because there's Sam, my kid, Sam A, and, who's the pastor, and Sam B, who's uh, one of the worship leaders. You've seen him on the video as well, I think. Um, at some point in time, I'm sure. Anyway, Sam A is Italian heritage, right? And he was he was talking about uh, there was a couple of different words that they would use when he was growing up. And I guess you know, very, very uh, brought up in a very Italian household with you know using like speaking Italian or what have you. And and he was saying that you know one of the words that he thought was Italian 
was Pasamente. Pasamente. See how I did that, Sam? If Sam was watching this, he's going to see how I'm talking with his hands, my hands, and I'm kind of talking Pasamente. He just realized it was just basement with Italian accent. But that was like, yeah, apparently he was quite a bit older when he found that out, so. <laughs> Yeah, I still can't do accents, you know. I don't think Sam watches these, but I should tell him I'm doing an Italian food segment. Maybe he'll watch. And he can be insulted by my Italian accent that I, that I just tried. That didn't work very well. I have to sit and let them rest. This is my, my other buddy who, uh, who's uh, Greek origin. He, uh, him and his, his dad had uh, restaurants when he was growing up and stuff like that, he says, I have to let the meat rest for a minute. I mean, I've been working harder than, than that, so, you know, I'm, I'm not resting, really. But, you know, apparently, well, he's, he's the expert, you know. I'm pretty much done waiting, you realize that, right? You, you won't know. If I just if I just start cutting them up and putting them in, you'd think I'd just fast-forward this stuff and just edit it out, right? I have no patience for resting. How long does it have to rest for? Any idea? Two minutes? One minute? I don't know. I think it's done. I think it's done. Just in case anybody was wondering, those are those meatballs are loaded with green bits. <laughs> Pleasant when she thinks the camera's on. Did you hear me tiptoeing up <laughs> so I didn't walk in and go? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Love you. How was your day? Hang on. I'm not gonna let her talk about her day. You know, I'll let her get all her stuff out first. Although they want to see you. They want to see you. So you know, you gotta. Oh, I don't have stuff to get out. Okay. I do, but it won't help. Uh, do you have anything you want with the spaghetti squash and meat sauce? Cheeseburger. Really? Chicken nuggets. Actually, really? Chips and dip. Uh, Hurtful. Side of chocolate. Hurtful. Hurtful. Cheesecake. That's desserts. You want to... Just so you're aware, those are all foods you eat when you want to eat your feelings. <laughs> Sorry. Alrighty then. Cut. <laughs> uh, do we do we make Caesar salad? By reading me. You? Yeah, but do we have? What I mean is, do we have? I don't know. Romaine lettuce. That's a question. Yeah. You know. Oh, there is romaine. Thank you. Wow. See, I found the romaine lettuce. You're welcome. I'm gonna try to eat. I need a drink if you stop. I left this in the car and couldn't go get it. Oh, that was yours. <laughs> Pardon my judgmental look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw it. Again, very light on the carbs, these things. So, you know. Like I say, I love to cook. I've always liked to cook. Never liked to clean, but you know, always like to cook. So, I'm trying to get better at the cleaning. <laughs> this is fantastic, by the way. Thanks for making dinner, baby. Mm. Well. All right, spaghetti squash, she is done. Sorry, no accents, I don't do accents. You wanna get your stuff ready? What's that? Okay. 
Yeah, it's great. Did you, it. did you take me to get dog food? No, 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 I'm gonna do that in a minute. Okay. I'm just uh, twisting this up. Oops. I'll clean that up. I'll clean that up in a minute. A little bit of bacon there. Ah, that's the love right there. Bacon and Caesar salad. A little bit of Edam cheese. Mm. A little bit of mozzarella cheese. Where'd the mm. other fork go? Mwah! I took it. Why? Well, because... We weren't done dishing out the salad. Sorry. How difficult this is. Can I pretty low because I was at work all day. I don't like it dumb. I like a specific amount that I can go scoop with two forks. How's that? That's good. That good? Good. Oh! Okay. That's too many. <laughs> now you have my fork. Why didn't you use that fork? Because I grabbed that fork. You were just being difficult. Would I do that? <laughs> would I do that? Seriously, would I be difficult? Anyway, dinner. Ah. Hey, Fraser. Good to see me again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not gonna keep you too long today. I've got a lot of video on there, so uh, I don't want to. I don't want to go over 30 minutes. Um, but uh, yeah, we had a good day. Got a lot of stuff done at Jesse's place. That's done now. Um, you know, got, yeah, we just cooked a little bit, so I uh, had some fun. Would have been more fun with Allie here the whole time, but, you know, she she was working hard, so it was all good. So I just wanted to read uh, a quick uh, uh, scripture for you, and uh, it's Luke, so it's the New Testament, Luke, chapter 15, uh, 1 to uh, 10. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him. This is hearing Jesus, obviously. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the, lash, the lost sheep until he finds it? When he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. I know it says earlier there, you know, uh, in, in verse uh, 7, I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who do not need to repent. There is none righteous, not one, except for Christ. So everyone needs to repent. But he was telling this parable to the Pharisees who thought they were righteous. They thought they were good enough. And you know, nobody is. So, But, you know, the point of this uh, these parables is just that uh, that's... Jesus describing how God feels when one person asks for forgiveness for their sins and commits to Christ. There's a party in heaven every time one person comes to Christ. It's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. That's how much he loves us. So. Anyway, like I say about going to keep it fairly short tonight for the chat, but uh, there's lots of video to watch. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the video today, and uh, miss you. I love you. God loves you. You know that. And I will post more tomorrow.